Shalom, everyone. This is Ty Green. Hymenaeus and Philetus were wrong about the rapture. And there are many folks making a similar error today. Let's get into where we see these guys within scripture, their error and what we need to look for in our present day and time. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. And we're going to see Hymenaeus and Philetus mentioned in a letter from Apostle Paul to Timothy. We're going to get into this topic of the rapture. And in this presentation, I'd like to share a bit on what it is. Specifically, it's a resurrection and it's a rescue. But I want to focus in on the fact that it is indeed a resurrection. Then in another video, I want to share what it is, followed by why the rapture happens. I believe that it's crucial for folks to understand this, especially now as we're entering into a season of transition into hope and for some uncertainty. The word of God is certain. And what we're going to learn is what the word of God says about this expected resurrection. Some call it the rapture, the harpazo. Apostle Paul taught about the rapture, a resurrection that has events which precedes it and of course events that occur afterwards. What I'd like to point out is that we must know about this topic of the resurrection and we must know about it in context so that we won't make the same mistake as Hymenaeus and Philetus. Well, let's pick it up in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Let's start with verse 7. And this is within Apostle Paul's letter to Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2, starting at verse 7. Apostle Paul says this to Timothy. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Right here is Apostle Paul's reference to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Keep this in mind as I will refer to this later. Let's keep going. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Here's another reference to a resurrection, but this time it involves a group of people. When he says, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Let's keep going. Verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And here it is right here, folks. And their word will eat as does a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. So the truth is that there is a resurrection, but Hymenaeus and Philetus were in error, saying that it is past already and they overthrew the faith of some. This is big, folks, because Hymenaeus and Philetus were indeed wrong about the rapture, the resurrection of believers in Christ. One reason why it overthrew the faith of some is because after the resurrection, 
that they were expecting, which is in fact the same resurrection that we are expecting. The expectation is something happens afterwards. And if you have missed this resurrection, you will be here for the judgments upon the earth, which is due to sin and iniquity. And since scripture confirms scripture, this is confirmed within the sequence of events way back in Isaiah chapter 26, verses 17 through 21, that after a resurrection, the judgment begins. The question one could ask is why would Hymenaeus and Philetus go around telling folks that the resurrection has passed already? Why would they say the resurrection has already happened? I believe that the word of God shares that answer. Apostle Paul taught on a resurrection of mass believers of the righteous. But there was another one that happened already. Most of you guys know this one. Go to Matthew chapter 27. Let's pick it up at verse 50 where Christ, the Lamb of God, is dying on the cross for our sins and iniquities. Verse 50, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And here it is, right here. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. See that? A resurrection. Bunch of folks. Old Testament saints. Remember, they could not go to heaven until Jesus died on the cross. They were kept in Abraham's bosom, a special place in hell. Their bodies in the graves and their spirits in Abraham's bosom. And Jesus shared about this. Turn to Luke chapter 16. Let's look at what Jesus said, beginning at verse 22. This is the parable of Lazarus and the rich man. And the Lord says this. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried this is deep, y'all. Do you see this? The beggar died and was carried off by the angels into Abraham's bosom. We can assume this was the beggar's spirit, but look at this. The rich man also died and was buried. So we know the dead physical body, the flesh of the rich man was buried after he died. Now watch this. The rich man lifts up his eyes in hell, his spiritual body. Look at this next verse. And in hell, he lift up his eyes being in torments and sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receives thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this between us and you, there is a great gulf affixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. There's so much here, but to stay on track, all of these righteous folks, these saint spirits were kept there in Abraham's bosom until Christ was resurrected from the dead. Then they, the Old Testament saints, were resurrected after Christ as Christ is the first fruits of them that slept. And we know this from first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept.
And there's an order to it. First Corinthians 15, 23 and 24 says, but every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits afterward, they that are Christ's at his coming, then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. It's a lot in those two verses written by Apostle Paul, but just a note on Christ, the first fruits. When Christ was resurrected, it was the appointed time of first fruits, the feast of first fruits, just like the Lord outlined within Leviticus 23, just like he said, these are my feasts. So when we see the Lord resurrected on first fruits, and we've seen the Old Testament saints raised after Christ. A whole bunch of folks were resurrected. Further in verse 23, we see this. Afterwards, they that are Christ's at his coming. This is another group of people. See that? So Hymenaeus and Philetus were in error. No doubt folks knew about the resurrection of the Old Testament saints. Bodies were gone out of the graves and everything. The truth, a resurrection. The error, wrong one. We saw two different references to two different resurrections within Scripture. Now let's look at this next verse, 24. Then comes the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. It appears that the rapture happens, then comes the end, right? Or is the rapture a resurrection at the end? It's all in how one interprets it, right? And this is the same error that Hymenaeus and Philetus made. We can't make this one, folks. They knew of a resurrection and got it wrong, and it overthrew the faith of some. Same as today. We all heard of a resurrection at the rapture, and folks got it all wrong, and now we have issues as to when it happens. You know, pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation and post-tribulation. The rapture is indeed a resurrection, but not all resurrections are the rapture. The resurrection of the Old Testament saints was not a rapture. So something makes these two resurrections different. What makes the rapture so special? There's only one rapture. And we will cover that next. Till we meet again, live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.